Welcome to Season 3, Episode 28 of Fabrically Speaking Live. I'm your host, Claire Rowley, inventor of the Creative Feet line of sewing machine products. And today we are trying a new setup here. I have my microphone above me, and I wish that was the only thing that was going on. The other issue is that I've been hearing interference in the microphone. I apologize. I was not able to correct it. And if so, if you're not hearing me well, I'm so sorry. Give me a thumbs up if you're hearing me okay. Let's see what kind of changes, adjustments I may be able to make. Hi, Pam Suri from Clovis, New Mexico, and Gail from Pierce, Arizona. We are experiencing a, a very intense, uh, jumpy, thunderstorm right above me right now. Hello, Sheila from Southern California and Lynn from Arvada, Colorado. Hello, everybody. I love you all so much. Thank you for being so patient. Hi, Pacola. And Ayako and Tina and Lorinda. Uh -uh. How's it sound? Is it okay? It is? Maybe it's just what I'm hearing in the in my speakers on this computer I don't know I'm, I'm turning it up again a little bit because I know some of you have challenges when it comes to hearing you shouldn't have to be all the way up on your volume so I'm gonna have this figured out before we begin filming and that is what I'm doing right now I am in the process of filming the create a feed extensive master course super excited about that. I feel like pulling my microphone down and sticking it in front of me right now. That would just be too much. I feel like I just did a workout. So we'll see how this goes. So you're hearing the sound. Well, it's just a little bit farther away from me, I think, than it should be. Oh well. I spent two hours on it. I was going to be ready before I went live. Then the thunderstorm hit. All the power went off. Oh, it's been exciting here. And Chase has been very scared. I think they, they, oh, that made it worse. So I'm, I think it's, I think it fixed. Oh my goodness. I think it's fixed. I don't hear any interference. Yay. I wish I could say I did. To, all I did was move the microphone, and I did that so many times. All right, enough of that. If you're new to my channel, this is Fabrically Speaking Live. I go live every Thursday at 2 o'clock Mountain Standard Time, and we don't change our clock. So half the year will be one time for you, and the other half of the year will be another time for you, unless you, too, are in Arizona. And then, well, you're at the same time as I am. If you're on Facebook, go ahead and hit the three button, three little dots on the top right hand screen and give Restream permission to see who you are and then I'll be able to know who you are and that makes it a lot more special. So I have been teaching since I was 19 years old. I am now 59 years old. So, wow. It has been a lifetime of... Uh, warm experiences with so many of you and I'm going to get emotional if I talk too much about that so I'm not going to do that but my plan is to someday retire and in order to do that well I have to take what's in my head and bring it out to you and so what I decided to do was to it's partly why I created the create with Claire Rowley school or platform where you guys have been extremely busy today I think there was over a hundred posts today. I didn't know you guys had that much clicking in you. So the Creative Fit Extensive is a course inside of the school. It's opening August and it is broken down into four segments. You have the ability to purchase all of it right now at the Early Bird Special. At the end of today there will be, there will be a 10% coupon given to the winner of the one that pays attention throughout this 
day. I gotta check my cameras. They're all, see if they're all working because one of these days I'm gonna do something with this card that my daughter gave me. All right, so those of you who've been in here before know how it works. You have to pay attention to what I say. I am going to say something, and at the end of the show, I'm going to ask the question, and whoever answers it the fastest in one answer is the winner of the prize, and today's prize is 10% off the Creative Feed Extensive, which you will find in our site, and I'm going to go ahead and share my desktop to help you to know what I'm talking about when I talk about the school. As many of you may not know what I'm talking about, now I'm repeating myself. I'm just crossing my fingers that the power stays on and we don't have another scary storm activity happen. So if we go to back to network, when you come into the school, and it is Create with Claire Rowley, and I'm, I think I may be able to copy this right now and put it in the chat, but it is in the description of the video. What do you know? Let me do it this time. Yay. Hi, Mary Man. And Facebook users that have not given permission to restream inside of the group or place within Facebook that you're viewing from. So on the on the screen here, what you see is when you come to creative come to create with Claire Rowley, which is my overall school where you will be able to take classes in sewing, quilting, embroidery, and also in art and creative writing, as I will be doing a creative writing course as well once my novel is published. So when you're in here, you'll see up here on the top left-hand side the word Creative Feet. That is our website, and it when you click on it, it takes you to where you can purchase the Creative Feet products. We have a coupon running today and it ends, I think I have it ending on the 18th and it is FEET20. I'll put that coupon code also in the chat. When you enter that coupon into the coupon box on checkout inside of the Creative Feet site where you will find the Creative Feet on its own page. This is the only coupon we have running right now and it's 20% off. It's a sizable discount because we, in order to take the Creative Feet extensive, well, you need the Creative Feet because otherwise you won't have the tools you need to follow along. Normally you buy one foot and it only does one thing. With the Creative Feet, each foot does over 20 different things. The Satin Edge foot does the most. It is the bulk of the course and so if you want to see some little videos on it right now you can on our website but we also have hundreds of videos on the YouTube channel back to the school if you click on the circle there it will take you back to the beginning of create with Claire Rowley if you ever get lost inside of it it is a social media site kind of like our own little Facebook group on the left hand side here I'm scrolling down and you go to creator courses and that is where you'll find the creative feed extensive and you have your option to purchase the creative feed extensive either in its entirety this is the early bird pricing when you click on this and I am signed in as me, so it'll look a little different to you when you go in there. There'll be a preview button, so you have the overview. These are open to everybody right now so that you can get an idea of what is inside of the course. The course itself is hidden behind 
the scenes until you pay for it but you can look and you'll see payment options and this is a a good place to start if you don't want to pay for the whole course in, in one purchase so back to one of the things I have in here is the creative feet needle and thread connection this is huge for sewing and it will be a course also sold separately but is included in the creative feet extensive and it is an extensive course itself on all of the science behind the needle size type and thread types and fabric types and how they all work together. So it will be chock full of information and a good place to start before you ever do any project in the future so you know that you're using the proper science. And then we have the Creative Feet overview, each of the sections on the Creative Feet itself. This will be a all over to help you know which foot to use for each technique um, what I'm trying to say is if you're following a pattern and they see and they say do a rolled hem on the edge of this fabric you might sit there and go what's a rolled hem and how do I do it so Inside of the Creative Feet Overview will be a list of hundreds of different techniques that you will find in patterns. And then you'll be able to click on the link and it will take you to the instructions on how to achieve that using methods that I've created. If you don't know that I have been involved in developing procedures, I don't only invent products, I also invent techniques and have helped counsel many companies over the years to develop the proper processes to protect their sewers from injury, from repetitive motion injury. In addition to that, also how to make the most money from their sewing and make products that don't fall apart. Because if you buy a blouse and you wear it only once and it shreds along the seams, you might think that you need to lose a little weight, but you also might think that that is really poor quality and I'm never buying from that company again. So the companies have been uh, have contacted me over the years and I help them with knowing which sewing machine options there are for them. It's a service that I have done for free all of these years and basically I really wanted to create an encyclopedia of the science of sewing and quilting and also uh, then will be another one for embroidery in free motion and in sewing machines that do embroidery automatically. So that will be another course coming up later. If you have any questions about the course, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. And you can use the contact form at creativefeet.com. You can also email me using this email that I'm putting in the chat. That email address is where you can discuss payment options should you want to take the course and can't swing the whole payment right now. Know that we are doing our own financing for those of you who want to do that. And there is an extra cost for that because there's a lot more work to keep up with people when they're not paying in full. But I understand that you may not have all of it right now. And then really what the live is going in and out right now, Mary, is that happening to anybody else? Because I am not seeing it on my end. It could be your area. Video is spinning. So I'll try my best not to. <laughs> I can't stop it from happening, unfortunately. This is what it's like in the summer in Arizona. So I thought I'd do a little demo sewing because I didn't get a chance to really create any project today. And right now I have the sequins and ribbon foot on the machine from a photo shoot that I did. And the sequins and ribbon foot is not just for sequins. Oh, the thunder is so loud, you guys. It's scary. It's pretty exciting to not have all this stuff in front of me right now. Let's see if I can move that. 
There we go. And I do plan on getting the camera to be in a better position. I was hoping to get that done today as well, but could not. For those of you who have been wanting a different camera angle. So the sequence and ribbon foot is engineered so that you can sew over sequence, but this foot also sews all sizes and styles of flat, flexible trims like ribbons and braids and upholstery braid. Every size and style of elastic. We have a variety of different elastic techniques for it. If you were to try to just put some of some sequins into a foot, your traditional feet, you would have issues with it not going through smoothly. And also you wouldn't be able to sew over and do loops like I'm going to do here using a zigzag stitch. Now I have all this memorized because I invented the foot and I did in invent this the year the sequins came out on a string like this. You're not seeing the posts in the chat? Why is that? <laughs> I'm seeing it in the chat. Live chat. So it's not letting me. Let's see. Borders. Okay, so there's the email to email address to send to me if you have the desire to take the course. Uh oh, all of a sudden my whole system shut down on the screen. I'll tell you what, nothing like an electrical storm in Arizona. If you've never witnessed one, it's quite exhilarating. The sequins and ribbon foot also has additional guides available so that you can do a wide variety of different size sequins. And here comes a really loud thunder and Tinkerbell. I know it's very scary right now. Her heart is beating so. <sighs> Terrified puppy, ears back and everything. So scary. Oh. <laughs> oh, she's moaning too. Where you purchase the sequins on a string, you can find them at uh, different stores like Joann's and Hobby Lobby and Michael's. I'm pretty sure they're still in business. I don't get out <laughs> a lot. Also, if you search on the internet, use a search engine and search for pre-strung sequins, you'll probably find them. At some point, my, my desire is to create a kit that you can purchase for each segment. So you have all of the items you need to create a binder. And this is the binder that I currently offer at creativefeet.com. And you can see how thick this is. Know that the school, when, when this course is finished, you will have a series of these binders because I barely touched on what you could do with the Creative Feet when I released this book and the video that supports it. Don't feel like you're wasting any money by having the book and video. It is, it is different than what I'll be doing in the school. And you have it in your hand, whereas this you go into the school to access it. You will be able to also download the video and print out the, the written materials. So the, the course is not just video, someone talking, it is me and the up close video where we're using a better camera angle than what you see when I go close like this. Even though this is a really good tight shot, you can't see as well as you'd like and know that on the extensive, you will be able to see as if your nose is right in front of it. You will have all of the settings to set up your fabric for each type of technique that you're going to use sequins for. Not just how to sew sequins, but how to sew sequins on chiffon, how to sew sequins on leather, on lingerie. Each type of sewing technique or process 
for the particular industry that you're interested in sewing for will be covered so that you don't have to guess and you don't have to worry about having your needle cut your fabric causing your garment to fall apart or experiencing sh skip stitches and and shredding of the thread so right here I set up the foot with the proper settings the width the length the the thread that I'm using is a colored thread because I want you to see the stitch. Hi, Amy. <laughs> Hi, Madeline. Hi, Brenda. Brenda, oh my goodness, you're a busy lady. You have been all over the school today. All right. Oh, feel better, Lorinda. And I did send you an email with information on what I use for pain. I hope you got that email and don't hesitate to reach out to my bioenergetic feedback therapist in that email. It's amazing what she can, what she has to, to offer to help us move through our, you know, this season in our lives and uh, feel better. I will see you in the, in the course. And in the school don't hesitate to call me I'll be available by phone tomorrow you guys you were bored <laughs> Brenda was bored okay I'm sorry I, I bored you here we go I'll tell you what the course will not be boring and here we go so as you sew with any other foot sewing sequins you'd have to guide the sequins and what you're not aware of is that most of the time my hands are nowhere near any trim that I sew and that is because I designed each foot for a specific person in mind. This person was a fashion designer, not, not someone with a physical challenge, but she did have a challenge. What she wanted to be able to do was to be able to sew rows of sequins around. She paid over $300 for one foot to be made to sew sequins down. And when she came all around and made a circle design like I'm doing here, as, as she approached a row that was already stitched down, well, then the foot flipped over the sequins and they broke and snapped in half. So what I was designing was a foot that would allow us to go over rows that we've already sewn. And in that design, it turns out it, it sews elastic like nobody's business. This foot is available at Creative Feet right now at 20% off. Today through the 18th this is July 14th 2022 so you see these stitches crossing over watch this you just wiggle and the stitches drop beneath the sequins and nobody can tell how you sewed it on it's like a little magic trick and I've got lots and lots of tricks you can even sew the sequins right on the edge of the fabric on the edge of a lingerie fabric on wedding veils using invisible thread and lingerie thread, sometimes we use cotton, sometimes we use silk, sometimes we use rayon, sometimes we use polyester, sometimes a heavy polyester, sometimes medium weight, sometimes fine. And you will not have to guess about when to use each one. And instead of having to, excuse me, I got my hair going in my eye. I had a big roll of batting fall on my head just a minute ago, right before I went live. My eye is twitching. You don't need to know that. Okay. So if you've ever sewn a pattern and you followed all the steps, step by step, and then it just didn't work, it didn't look right. Well, it's probably because you missed something in the, the book or the pattern in their instructions. Maybe because a term is used wrong or incorrectly or in many different ways. In other words, if you have a ruffle, uh, what is the difference between a ruffle and a gather? Both are gathered. Both are ruffles. So what's the difference? And when do you want to gather fabric? And when do you want to ruffle fabric? Knowing all of this stuff makes sewing so much more relaxing. And I ache for you guys when I have these phone conversations and you call, I have lots of calls every week there's several calls a week with someone having a challenge trying to figure out what settings what what to use what needle what thread and no matter how many times i have a phone call with you well if you're not doing this every day you're not going to retain 
exactly what's taking place. I'm going to do a little bit of a satin stitch here. And since I have some, <laughs> this fabric, this is a double sided fabric, by the way, fused together as it was something that I made with you guys recently on the show. I can't remember what it was. Do any of you remember what I used this fabric for? I can't remember. But sometimes it, I fuse fabrics together to create extra body, to create a more stable surface, to create heavier trims to be attached like this here. This is a combination of the satin edge and the pearls and piping foot working together. So a ruffle. Whoops. Sometimes you, you're told to ruffle your fabric like you see here with two rows of equally spaced apart rows of stitching. Sometimes you're told to just do one row and sometimes you're told to do a gather. A gather is an adjustable method of gathering up fabric. A ruffle is done using a locked stitch where you cannot adjust the stitching afterward. So the this is the most favorable, favorable method of gathering fabrics to create ruffles. If you're not sewing on a straight, if you're going to sew curves, go around a collar, maybe do create scallops or turning on a, on a pillow. So if you're going to make a pillow, you want a gather, not a ruffle. And a lot of, a lot of patterns call for, you use a ruffler. Have you, do any of you have a ruffler and you cannot figure out how to use it? That will be some of the bonuses inside of the creative feed extensive. Some of the feet that I still use for other projects, uh, things that you guys want to know and can't figure out how to do like the rolled hem foot. Those will be bonus material inside of the course. So I'm not just going to be covering creative feet. I will also show respect to other feet that were designed very well, making it unnecessary for me to make a foot to replace their technique. But just so you know, if you were to look through all of your feet in your, uh, your kit and you laid them all out on the table, our feet, our three feet would be the equivalent of about 150 feet laying on your table instead of the just three feet that we have. So. I'm also going to have a chart and it's going to say the foot that you're told to use for something and you click on it and it'll tell you which one of the three creative feet to use. Or if you want to use the foot that came with your machine or if it's something that you want to purchase. Another way also can provide you with feet for other made by other companies should you ever want. All right. I'm not sure what I made it. I'm looking and this is how my little cup thing ended up. This is two episodes ago because last week I took off to rest. Actually, I was going to work on the Creative Feet Extensive and I fell on the, I, I tripped myself with my hose. <laughs> so if you want to be able to do things like this, well, you can follow along in the YouTube channel for that. These are free things and a lot of times I do offer free classes. I can't continue to do that and there's no way that I could ever film all that is in the extensive in YouTube videos. Not my entire lifetime can I do it. So how it will be is very effective. I will give you the recipe on how to get ready and then the video clip to support it. Edited, not live, so you won't have the swirling thing on the screen and you will not have to wait while I say, hi Ayako, hi Madeline, none of that. It will all be just very relaxed, good sound quality, perfect video close up so that you get to sewing fast because a lot of times we're in a hurry and what, what if you're going to a wedding and all of a sudden the bridesmaid comes up and goes, can you hem my dress? And it's beaded all the way to the floor. I have a method for that. Yes, I do. So you'll be able to look for hemming beaded bridesmaids dresses and it will take you right to that and you will know exactly how to handle it so that you can hem that in less than an hour and be on your way to the wedding and be the savior of the wedding. Call me Grace? I don't know what you guys are talking about. Okay. 
So I was going to sew on that fabric. What did I do with it? Here we go. I was going to be all relaxed until the thunder lightning came. I screamed out loud and I live here, so I'm used to it. The poor dogs. They're like, you're not supposed to do that. We'd count on you. You're supposed to make us feel safe. Chase is down there. All right, here we go. So if I want to sew beads on the edge of a fabric like this, I can. There's all kinds of different trims that you can sew on, including rat tail cording and different braids. And each type of trim has its own challenges and things that are required to make it easier. Sometimes you want to sew on the top of the fabric, sometimes on the edge. Sometimes you want the trim to go beneath the fabric so it drops in the fabric. These are techniques that I've created so that you can put pearls on, on items that are intended for infants and not hurt the child. If you're into making money from your sewing, if you are or know someone who wants to manufacture items for sale, know that these feet also fit industrial sewing machines. All you need is a zigzag stitch. Here we go. So I am not holding the trim. I'm just holding the fabric. I'm going to do it off to the side here using my other finger which I don't normally do. So I am just making sure that the fabric stays underneath the left side of the foot. And that's with no stabilizing and a raw edge and it rolls under and hems the fabric. And now you can finish a little girl's dress that way or Barbie clothes or anything else. So just an example of the power of the creative feet can also sew up to four rows of small trims at the same time and rhinestones and chain and cord and braid stretch piping non-stretch piping so stretch fabrics to non-stretch fabrics the science of all of that can be complicated and you may even stop before you even start now we can sew on top of the material as well And unlike other copies of my foot, because I am the inventor of the pearls and piping foot, no sewing machine company had it before I designed it. I did design this foot for a woman who had hand sewn beads for her entire life and she could no longer open her fingers. She couldn't stick her finger out like that because she had spent too much time with a needle in her hand. So her hand actually became stuck in that hand sewing position and the other hand in the fabric holding position. So when I designed this, I had to make it so she had no need to ever touch the pearl. And that's why you can spin around and you'll notice my fingers are nowhere near touching those pearls. And you can go straight as well as sewing around in circles. Understanding and knowing the principles on how to spin around on fabrics that have stretch or don't have stretch is also very important. How do you go and sew around and make maybe a heart? How do you applique with beads? Because you can applique with all of the different trims. You are not limited just to satin stitch. With the creative feet, each of them are capable of doing several different methods of applique as well. And just so you know, next Tuesday, I will be a guest on Sue Pellin's, I think she calls it sewing with in slippers. And I will announce it in the newsletter and in the school so that you can be a part of Sue's class. I'm going to be on for about a half an hour demonstrating and talking about applique, if that's something that you're interested in. Sue Pellin is a new member of the school. Saw her in the different places posting things and commenting. If you're watching Sue, hi. I can't wait to be a part of your show on Tuesday. And let's see. Hi, Amber Angel. Angel. <laughs> and Carlene is in here. Hello. Now I'm going to show a little bit of the satin edge foot. Satin edge is capable of so many different things that I have to take a deep breath. 
to say just the ones I've memorized, but every time I do that, I know I'm leaving off a lot of techniques because I have been planning to make volume number two of the Creative Feet Technical Guide and Workbook, but never could get the time to do it and knew that it really would have been better if I could create longer videos for each one. So the two hour instructional video on the creative feed is 61 different techniques covered in that. In order to do that, I had to edit out my breath and I was limited as to how much information I could provide. So if I show you how to do a satin stitch on a napkin, well, that's, that's what I showed. I didn't show you how you could satin stitch on the edge of wedding veils and uh, how to satin stitch on lace, how to satin stitch on the edge of every fabric out there including all the costume materials if you're into cosplay and you have some creation in your mind that you want to make know that you can also all of the fiber art and wearable art is there's just no limit to what you can do with just our three feet without the need for hundreds of different feet the satin edge foot is the foot i designed for a woman who was born blind and she was also born deaf that means she never ever touched or, or, or felt anything and saw it or heard what it sounded like. That meant that I had to teach her using no reference, no remember what that looked like. No, she had to just experience it for the first time with me. And it was the most in, incredible time in my life. That is when I was about, I think I was 17 when we met. And I modified sewing machine for her using Braille alphabet. And it was the new home 5001 sewing machine, the first computer sewing machine that you could program. After working with her for about a year and modifying nine different feet from the sewing machine so that she could sew without sight. And she came in from the restaurant with a napkin and she pulled it out of her purse and turned bright red with embarrassment because she, she stole it from the restaurant with all intention of returning it after showing it to me because she couldn't explain it. We talked by typing into a machine. She typed, I read a digital readout. She, I typed and she felt braille letters hitting her fingers. The story of all of this will be inside of the extents of how I created each foot, the story behind it. And I will at some point offer another course on how to invent products. Should you be interested in inventing something of your own, the process to follow so that you can have a successful launch of that. So here we go. The satin edge foot has a guide wire that guides the fabric like a serger, like a mini overlock machine. And it, the wire is connected to the white guide on it. This nut, you turn it and it moves based on what stitch pattern, stitch widths that you're using. And then underneath it is engineered with a deep tunnel or channel allowing large thick areas of thread to pass beneath it. And I've engineered it so that there's a bar that stops the wire from pushing against the bottom of the foot. This means that there's no way your satin stitch can get stuck in there. It's actually suspended between the bottom and the top of the toes of the actual foot. Go ahead and put the foot down, select the width of the stitch that you want to do. And I'm going to go ahead and select a four millimeter wide zigzag stitch because this fabric is built for it. Choosing the width of your stitch is really up to you. What do you like? And also how wide the opening in the foot is in relation to your machine as all sewing machines are not made the same. Know that we're the only foot ever to fit all sewing machines, no matter how new or old, whether it's industrial or domestic. Each of the feet come with adapters. Inside of this package is a real close-up shot. Let's see if we can. Two flows, we'll do the top camera. So this is how they come packaged. If you purchase them separately, no matter how you buy them, you always get some instructions because well, I'm the first sewing machine presser foot maker to release a foot with instructions. When you bought your foot from the sewing machine company before I released Creative Feet, 
you used to have to go into your dealer and take a little lesson on that foot and then go home and remember what that foot did and how to use it. And then you go home and if you forgot or didn't have time to work on the project, well then, odds are you forgot how to do it. Each of the feet come with a low shank, a high shank, a singer slant, and a super high shank. I don't want you to think of them by sewing machine make and model anymore because sewing machine companies are sharing their different heights. If you have a nine millimeter wide sewing machine like the new Janome machines that have the even feed, or if you have a Foff sewing machine, it doesn't matter that our snap-on bar is not nine millimeters. You can use one of our adapters in place of your adapter and snap it on to the foot and that makes it so that you can then use our foot in place of your machine's apparatus. In other words, if, the, if your machine has a adapter of its own on the machine that allows you to snap on nine millimeter wide feet, you'll take it off and put put it aside and use one of ours instead and our adapters are snap on and they're also guaranteed to last a lifetime even if your dog chews it up as long as he spits it out. Even in the little booklet that comes with the feet you get written instructions with machine settings, needle to use, stitch length, stitch with stitch pattern and different hints. So enough of that. Now I'm going to show you how the satin edge foot works on sewing on the edge of the fabric. I tapped something. <laughs> I don't know what I tapped. Did I change stitch pattern? Interesting. Whoops. Okay. Gotta turn the machine off and on. Mary, I'm going to post... It's so weird. I have two chats, you guys. It's really not weird. I just have to think for a minute. Sorry about that. Zigzag stitch. <laughs> stitch with. Mary asked how to find the show that I'm going to be a guest on next Tuesday with Sue Pellin. It's sewing in slippers. She mentioned that she has a Facebook group and or page, and that is where the show will be airing. So I will provide a link for that. For those of you who do, who do not want to be inside Facebook, she did say that she's going to give me a, a recorded version of it for uploading to my YouTube channel afterward. But if you want to be a part of the live experience, she will. Uh, it is inside of the Facebook platform. I'll notify you if you are following my newsletter from creativefeet.com. If you've yet to subscribe to my, my newsletter, be sure to do that as that is where we send out specials and I inform you of new products and things like appearances on different shows as I have been a guest on a lot of different television shows over the years, including the It's So Easy show. Our feet were used by Nancy Zeman. My, some of my students include her and Clotilda. Uh, top educators learning to use my techniques to then teach their patterns and their, uh, that, that is a huge part of my past as well. And, and when each of them passed on, you know, they both were trying to do what I'm doing now to give as much of their experience to the world before they retired. So that's, I don't want to bum you out, but that is my, this is my end of career path to make sure that I get all the information that I have out to the world so that it doesn't end with me. All right, enough of that. <laughs> so I have two chats going. I have a chat over here and a chat over there. And that's the chat I'm supposed to pay attention to. There are a lot of you in Facebook today. And uh, so that's why it looks different. If I'm not responding to all of you, know that I'm having trouble keeping up. I'm so glad the buzzing stopped. <laughs> I was going to lose it. All right, here we go. Hi, Sharon. I think your, your order went out. I can't remember. There's been a lot of back orders lately from other companies. I apologize for not being able to supply all of you with all of the items from them right now. Know that they're, they're stressed out. 
Yeah, Nancy Zeman and I knew each other for years, and now the company that bought the rights to Nancy's Notions just took our feet off her site for the first time since 1990. It's kind of sad. So shortening the stitch length down to the setting that I like. If you've ever tried to do a sad stitch on the edge of the fabric, you know that no matter what, you couldn't get the width of the stitch to maintain all the way down. And that is true of all sewing machines. I've never had to go this short on the stitch length. Very strange. But I just want to show you. Oh, that light's really bright right there. You almost can't see what I'm doing. Switch camera angles. Let me lower that light setting for you. This is where pre-recorded videos are so much better. But what you're not seeing is that I'm not holding on. Sometimes I can completely let go and have a conversation with people and, and know that I don't have to worry. And other times I, I monitor the fabric or and generally will rest on my little shoulder pillows and put just one finger down and a lot of times when I'm sewing I'll have a TV going and I'll just watch TV while sewing and you can't do that with any other sewing machine foot this is what I designed this foot to do for a woman born blind and deaf so it had to guide for her and I'm showing you how even if I try to knock it away that it stays and now I'll go back to close-up so you can see knowing that I am not holding on that my hands are not guiding that fabric at all. There are no other feet engineered like this because frankly no other person had to make a foot for a blind and deaf person. This is not rolling the fabric. Sometimes we want to roll the fabric, sometimes we don't. See how nice that stitch turns out? Mostly because my hands are not on the fabric. When you hold the fabric you affect feeding the feed dog relationship with the fabric and the sewing machine presser foot. I love teaching you guys. This is going to be a great class you guys. I cannot wait. In fact after this show ends today I will be continuing the filming of the first segment of the Creative Feed Extensive so that I'm ready. And know that as the each video is finished, I'm going to pop it in to the course. I'm not going to have to wait for me to film all of the episodes. Okay, so I was reading and sewing, and now I'm going to show you how accurate this is. So if you've ever wondered why your stitches don't look like that, that's part of the Creative Feed Extensive and it will apply to all sewing machines so that you know how to achieve what you want so that if you don't want that look, you'd rather have that look, how to get it, even if you set everything up the way I say and it doesn't work. <laughs> you used a different foot and you had to rip stitches out. <laughs> yeah, well those of you who've been watching my show for a while know that I rarely know where my ripper is because it's so rare that I need it and it's very relaxing to know that but, oh I was gonna put something on the edge of this I did sew the pearls on the top now I'm going to show you a, a larger bead the same foot and on the foot itself we have a washer and this washer moves the trim left or right so that if you're going to sew piping and you can't get your needle where you want it you move it over and it'll give you a whole nother set of needle positions to choose from it is a patented shape of tunnel so that you know that everyone that ever copied me on this foot and just about every sewing machine company has made an attempt to make a copy none of them copied it exactly 
And so that's why they don't perform the same. With this sewing machine, I know that I use my foot with the washer to the right when I'm sewing a large pearl. Now, when you are in the Creative Feet extension, you will have the ability to actually write down which make of sewing machine, which, so if you have 15 different machines, this foot fits all 15 of your machines, but they all may not use the same stitch pattern, stitch width, stitch length. So you'll be able to write down the machine and write down the setting for that machine. And you can do that in pencil so you can erase it. If you ever remove that sewing machine from your arsenal of sewing machines, how many of you have more than four sewing machines? And if you do list the brands and makes and models of sewing machines in the chat, show off, share with everybody. It'll make everyone feel normal because most people do hang on to their older machines. It's not uncommon at all these days using a zigzag stitch pattern. Once again, all I do is change the width to a wider zigzag than I used before. And then, you know, that's all written down for you. How to sew beads on the edge of the fabric, how to sew on the top of the fabric, how to sew more than one row. And if you use the stitch length for the small pearl, and then you use the big pearl, well, it's not the same. And you would think, you might think, well, it needs to be longer for the big pearl, but maybe not. So all of these things are explained so that you don't have to guess as to how to set up your sewing machine. You don't have to stitch out on a sample piece of fabric. And you know that I recommend you don't stitch out on a sample piece of fabric. Do I have this screwed on tight? Yeah. I recommend that you sew on the same kind of fabric, same thread, same needle, everything that you're going to do on your final project so you're not disappointed. Try to light the back of that up for you. There you go. Now I'm in the dark on this side. Where's that light? There we go. Once again, I'm not holding the pearls. I'm just resting, resting my elbow, one finger guiding and I'm not even wearing my glasses because I know I don't have to watch. The white featherweight Husqvarna brother Necky baby lock. You're afraid to list them all? Janome 300 baby lock journey Juki L2000 Singer 401A. That was the first zigzag sewing machine. Singer treadle. Ah. I was just thinking about Singer treadle machines last night. That's how I made my, my first sewn project on a sewing machine at the age of nine. When I was four, I started hand sewing. And when I was nine was my first sewing machine experience with my girlfriend, Maura Crawley. Her mother taught me how to make a pencil case and I inserted a zipper in it on a treadle. It was fabulous. Now our feet may attach to your treadle, but your treadles can only sew a straight stitch. So be sure, this is a four millimeter wide pearl, Carlene. You can go all the way up to seven millimeter if your sewing machine has the ability to go beyond that seven millimeter width. And then you have sergers as well. If I feel like it at some point, I'll do a serger course. I did used to teach the overlock machines and wrote one of the first instruction booklets for overlock machines ever written. When I invented a beating foot that was copied that was the first foot I invented. It was a beating foot for the serger, and it was copied by the company that I was representing. And that's what made me realize I was an inventor, was being copied. They even published my book verbatim. So that was a hard lesson. No instructors can say that you don't have to watch the needle. <laughs> yeah, you can look up at the sky and so. And now I'll uh, show you up close so you can see how beautiful that is. Get your proper lighting. So on this, which would be normally very scary and challenging, and it's just so solid and beautiful and never going to fall off. 
And you can sew right on Bridal Veil as well. If I have Bridal Veil within my reach, I'll sew a little on for you guys. Of course, you would normally use a, uh, the proper thread and needle for that. And that's, once again, back to the science. What needle and what thread should you use when sewing pearls on a wedding veil? What do you think? Those of you who have been watching the show, tell me what you think I should use on a, on a wedding veil. And then we also have the ability to sew yarns on. You can finish a wedding veil with yarn. And which foot do you think I would use to sew yarn on to a wedding veil? Which of the three creative feet is best for sewing yarn? Ooh. I really love this chenille yarn. So I got some blue pearls. Since I got some blue tulle here, I figure why not put some blue on there. This is another type of trim that you can use. How do you sew that on? So every type of trim, there's going to be full color photos as well of each of the trims that you would use. And I will do my best, as I said before, to provide you with trims so that you don't have to hunt for them. There's just a limit to what we can do. Stitch sentiments of bride on veil. So you've done wedding veil, embroidery linen, that's what you're saying? With the octi hoops, you can embroider right on wedding veil with no stabilizer behind it at all. And that is another course that is not the Creative Feed Extensive. The octi hoops. Extensive group, uh, extensive course will come out as well. One course at a time. All fabrics that are woven have bias, straight and with, with against grain, bias and straight. All these terms are used in patterns. And wedding veil is a stretchy type of material that gives in different directions. So how to stabilize your fabric for what you're doing if you're how to cut the wedding veil so that you don't have to deal with issues and how to make something super fast because that's that's the main part. I'm a guru. <laughs> you guys are so funny. Hi Claire. So much to catch up on. The Creative Feed Extensive opening August. Now is the early bird sign up. The price will go up. So $400 savings right now. So now here we go. I'm going to just take and place the bridal veil beneath the foot. And right now I have just regular thread on. This is not what I would normally do if I were actually making a wedding veil. Settings are pretty much the same as what I was just doing for putting whatever I just did. <laughs> Sewing them on with the satin stitch. And now I have my fingers guiding the bridal illusion and leaving the pearls alone again and this is one time I do pull from behind the foot I say there's I think only three times in all of the techniques that I've ever taught in sewing where I tell you to ever grab the fabric from behind the foot so if you are the type of sewer that sews with your right hand in front and your left hand behind. And Nancy Zeman did that. I used to just like go, stop it. You're teaching people to pull from behind the foot. But it was a habit that she developed because in the beginning, sewing machines only had two rows of feed dogs and that, that affected the way that the fabric would feed and we had to kind of help. And that is why some people appear to be better than you they've got it down just how much to pull and they've created their own techniques using a pulling of the fabric. It is not a good science to pull the fabric because we're 
Well, we're human and we are a little bit wobbly. And if your arms are up and you're not connected to your table and resting on your machine, you affect how straight you sew, as those of you who've been watching know. Cutting the, the nesting is the hardest part. Yes, cutting your wedding veil is the most challenging of all of the parts of sewing a wedding veil. It's just poofy. So as I'm sewing the wedding veil, I'm not holding the fabric, I'm holding the pearls from behind the foot. And, and this is, like I said, one of only three times that I can recall that I ever have you put your hand from behind the foot. It, uh, you're more likely to pucker your fabric if you pull from behind the foot. Also, you're, you're about 80%, I should never use percentages according to my son, you are really, really highly likely to break a needle if you pull your fabric through. Because what you have between your needle and hook is, is just a thousandth of an inch distance between the hook and the back of that needle. And as you're pulling from behind the foot, you actually cause the needle to pull toward the hand that's pulling. And then that hook comes around, which I might add, is the one part of your machine, if something goes wrong with it, your sewing machine is useless. You can't use it. If you damage that hook, you're going to have to take that sewing machine in and have it fixed by your mechanic. And nowadays, you, that, that could be months of waiting. So I will be making sure that you don't hurt your sewing machine. Part of the Creative Feed Extensive will be showing you how to do maintenance on your machine so that you, if you can't get to a mechanic, will be able to at least know that you're not hurting your machine. So you can see how perfect that stitching, no puckering at all. And that is a stretchy, the stretchy part of the bridal illusion. So I'm spray starch on the edge of your fabric, or you can use my liquid based on any fabric where you want to sew on the edge. You can put a, a bead of it on there and slide your finger across and let it dry fully. And then you have a water soluble stabilizer on the just the edge of the fabric instead of all over the fabric. Spray starch is a great stabilizer, as I mentioned a lot in my course or in my live show. I have several wedding veils that I have taught in my YouTube channel, Ayako. And when each, each Creative Feed Extensive section is complete, there is a bonus pattern and project that you will create an actual item using the techniques that you learned. So if you've ever taken a class just to learn the technique and you really didn't want to make the project, that is very common. We want, we're hungry for knowing how to do something, not necessarily making an, another pillow or another quilt for that matter. Kay Wood even got to where she stopped making the quilts. She just made the tops and folded them up and never finished them. She had over 500 quilt tops before she passed away. And I was given the opportunity to see only about a hundred of them one night when we had a slumber party at her house. So it is not uncommon to want to learn but not want to make what you learn to save that, to store that information so that you can use it when you find something that you really want to make. And that is how the Creative Feed Extensive is, is formulated so that you do not have to sit there and make something you don't want to make. And I'm doing my best to give you the bonuses at the end of each extensive that will please you the most, but you have the opportunity to make it or not. It's really up to you. As with the Creative Feed Technical Guide and Workbook, it is designed for you to make samples. When you make a sample of something rather than an entire project, and you know that you successfully sewed, this book has seen better days. Oh, better days. <laughs> That's so funny. That's how young I was when I published this book. And Carlene, I was wearing pink. <laughs> Carlene's always telling me to right we're pink so you 
you might not want to put pearls or rhinestones on top of a blouse right now. Maybe one day, maybe maybe there's a little baby girl in your future for a grandchild and and you're going to want to sew some pearls on. But right now you don't want to. Well, you want to know that you can do it while you have access to me in the extensive so that you build confidence and then you secure that sample into your book and this is a process that my parents created. They're the inventors of the machine use workbook. My mother and father created this way of not teaching you anything but having you learn so that you can use it later. And then when I invented the creative feed, I used the same concept and developed, drew over 500 illustrations to support the instructions because it is easier for your brain to learn using illustrations rather than photos. But now we have video, which helps a lot as well. So for instance, you can see how I have all these notes. So you'll be able to write notes and see how this is upside down and this is right side up. So how to know how to sew all the different styles of rhinestones. Just, you don't, you may not use it right away, but what if, what if you do want to use it one day? Then you know you have it. Because keep in mind the pearls and piping foot, well, it does lots of different things. So you're not buying it just to do something you don't want to do. You're buying it to do something you want to do. This is one of the gathering techniques. And this is our inlaid or corded piping. It's the only way you can sew piping without just doing straight lines. Oh, it's so much fun what you can do with that. And on and on and on and on. So this is just the original Creative Feet Technical Guide and Workbook. And, it, and I have lots of really fascinating things that you can do using these, but way, way more than that. I've been trying to figure out how many, and you know, I just, it's just so many that I can't, I can't even write them all down right now. So that's why I'm forming the class as I film it, because I can actually then go, okay, now, oh, that's right. I can do that and then I can write it down and then that'll be the next thing I film. And it may or may not go into the segment that you're in at that moment. I hope I'm not sounding as confusing as, as I feel I am. <laughs> so you wanna be a designer, Ayako? I think I remember that. We've had a lot of conversations, including today. Kay Wood was, uh, I met Kay Wood in my career, I was sick and I was at a show and I was laying down in the, in the lobby of the convention center, super sick. And she came up, that's how I met her. And she is so little. And she walks up to me and she goes, are you okay? And I, and I said, I'm sick, I'm starting to feel sick. And she, she already knew who I was and already had my feet. And, and she handed me a uh, Mucinex DM, and thanks to her, I was able to function. And uh, I always feel like she was like a little a mother to me on the road, as I did with Clotilda and Nancy Zeman as well. They all took me under my wing, I, their wing. I was a young girl when I launched my company. My eye is twitching. You wanna leave those I love with quilts. However, getting to know these techniques, my daughter will be interested. Know that I, there's no way I can keep up with the chat anymore, you guys, but uh, the school is a great place to reach out to me. And inside of the extensive, there's a, there's a, anyone who joins will have their, you'll have the ability to chat within there and share pictures as well, just like you can inside of the school already. If you're not a member of my Create with Claire Rowley school, it is a social media platform where you guys get to know one another and hang out and share pictures. In addition to that, I post classes and give you free instructions. And if you're a member of the VIP group, they also get a once a month, whatever you want Claire to sew day, where I sew and let them boss me around a bit, as much as I'll let them boss me around. So, this is an addition to that. And so I'm seeing what time it is. I did want to stop earlier today. 
because I need to uh, film for the Creative Feed Extensive. Do any of you have any questions right now? And I'm formulating the question that I'm going to ask. So if you've been paying attention, you can get your keyboards ready. Get ready to type. Remember, you must answer the question in entirety in one comment. So don't hit that send button till you know you've answered it in its entirety. Whoever answers it first in its entirety will win 10% off the Creative Feed Extensive. If you are today's winner, you need to reach out to me in the school or you can email me at orders at creativefeet.com or info at creativefeet.com or use the contact form at creativefeet.com. Any member of the extensive will also be given a coupon code to use throughout the uh, process because this is not already filmed yet. So you get special gifts to be part of the early bird group for that first session. Once I'm done, I do plan on creating a in-person kind of course or event up in Prescott, Arizona, so that we can get together as a group. So know that that is in the future as well, which I will probably correlate with the creator, with the, with the, what is it called? Teacher certification program. If you plan on being a teacher representing the Creative Feet products, which I don't know if I've explained before that that is something that we're going to offer, stores worldwide or all over the United States have asked if we have educators that could come in and teach using the Creative Feet. So if you're interested in becoming one of the Creative Feet instructors, this course will be a prerequisite to take the teach teacher certification program. I have not asked the question yet, but everyone should be ready. All right, ready? The question is, what is the difference between a ruffle and a gather? Hurry up. What is the difference between a gather and a ruffle? Both are gathered and both end up a ruffle, but there's a difference between the two. What is the difference? Right, gather equals and ruffle equals, or some way express to me the difference between the two. And I'm waiting to see who wins. Hungry today, very hungry today. No, Ayako. No, Carleen. It's a real tricky one. A lot of teachers teach you, just say it. Then we're going to ruffle, we're going to gather. And so it's been used, misused a lot. Lots of different terms in sewing are misused and thrown around. And this is why you wander around and you follow patterns. And sometimes you, sometimes you nail it and sometimes you don't. Because a lot of the teachers that teach are not taught. They create something and then they teach what they figured out. And... And that is why this is needed. The science of sewing and quilting is needing to be done. And this extensive course will extend into the book that I will be publishing called The Science of Sewing and Quilting. Come on, you guys. Brenda got it? Okay, so you, Brenda, I would say that Brenda, Brenda has it, <laughs> except for not exactly. So I can, you guys tell me if I'm being nitpicky or not. So a, it's almost right. It's just one word is different. So I think I'm going to give it to you, Brenda. You're the winner. You get 10% off the Creative Feed Extensive. And so basically the only word you didn't, you didn't need to put down. So a ruffle is stitched in a manner in which it cannot be adjusted. A pleat would be considered a, a ruffle. Pleats are ruffles. So see, wouldn't it be nice to know all that? Wouldn't it be nice if you watch someone 
do a pleated skirt that you knew that that's a ruffle? That your skirt itself is a ruffle. Even though it's, a, it's just a long ruffle with bigger pleats. Because pretty much ruffles are kind of pleated, but not always. I have some ruffle techniques that are not pleated. Some are beaded. Some are rhinestoned. I cannot wait for you to see all of the things that you can do. Well over a hundred techniques. I'm leaning toward possibly, possibly over 300 different techniques that have been floating around in my head for since I released the creative feet back in 1989. So congratulations, Brenda. Are you not bored anymore? Are you? I didn't think anyone could could make as many comments as you did today in the in the school. A ruffle is uh, is what it ends up being, right? It's a ruffle on a skirt. It's a ruffle on a pillow, and the term ruffle to ruffle your fabric is to gather it in a non-stretch manner. So when you have a ruffle on a pillow, you don't want it to be a ruffle. You want it to be gathered and end up a ruffle. Jeez, that's a lot. I taught students that were teachers as well, a whole, you know, wholesale show, and everyone there was a teacher, a professional educator. And I asked that question and they would just go, I don't know. <laughs> they don't know either. So this is good. You guys are gonna finally have the answers, the scientific truth, fact-based truth of what to do and why to do it. No more wives' tales or sewing tales. Serious science in a fun way, but you know, I hesitate to even talk about science in these days with all the science talk, but there is a science to sewing and there is a science to quilting and there is a science to embroidery. And maybe you can get away with breaking the science from time to time, but you may not realize that that's why your fabric is puckering. That's why your, your fabric literally tears away from whatever you did. And I would just love to help you avoid all of those bad experiences because just like when a child starts to walk and it falls and it hurts itself, it may take it a little bit longer to get back up again, but ultimately you're forced to. If you're sewing and you have a bad experience right off the bat, you're more likely to not sew for a long period of time. And, and it just breaks my heart. How many of you have done that? Have you ever tried something, failed, and then just went, I just can't do it. This is, I'm just not, I'm not good enough. And I just, I'm, I'm here to tell you that that's just not true. You just need to know the recipe. You need the right tools, not based on fluff and excitement and buy this new thing that I have, but to actually know that you're buying the right foot. One, there's a, there's a foot person out there selling a set of 50 feet. You will never use those feet. There's too many and they're not needed. All 50 of those feet can be replaced with just the satin edge foot alone. It's much easier to use one foot and do 25 different things with it than it is to do 25 different feet doing one thing. And all of that stuck in your head trying to remember it, you'll never remember it. I mean, if you're that good, I want to hire you. If you can remember everything that you do and you don't ever have to refer to something, I really would like to hire you. I could use another me in, the, in that respect. Hi, Elizabeth. You sat in my demonstration for years? Yeah. It got to where all I did was sit there and teach and you all sat there and listened and then you go home and call. I, I saw you, I spent all day in your booth and I can't remember what you, I saw you do something and how'd you do that? So all of that's gonna be in this. I can't wait. And some of the things I came up with were, were as a result of questions you guys brought up because you guys come up with some really, really bizarre things that you want to do. That's why you don't sew clothes. While I know that I know how to fit, it is not going to be part of the Creative Feet Extensive. I can say that... Uh, it might be in the future. I do have a dress form and I do know how to use it. And I can show you how to, how to make things fit, but not for this. This is all about techniques, how to, how to use any pattern from anyone and sew 
more accurately, faster, easier, and without physically hurting yourself. Because how many of you do this when you sew? You know? And then keep sewing. And then only to, to feel all that discomfort again. You need to not do that. It's bad for you. You can end up having permanent physical damage to your joints by pushing through pain. No pain, no gain should never have been a term ever used. You really need to learn the proper way to sit. I've been sewing since I was nine years old, professionally since I was 16, and I still sit up straight. You know, I have good posture. My hands are still nimble now that my thumb is pretty much healed from falling off my bike. <laughs> so, all right. You had a booth too? So tell us what you have, Elizabeth. There are several educators inside of the school already. And if you're listening, I do have the ability to allow you to teach a little course inside. And if you're interested in collaborating with me on videos and have me on your show or, or you're interested in being interviewed on a show by me, know that that is something that I would like to do as I am all for supporting other professionals. It's always been how I've lived my life. I've advised companies and just to give you an example, Sinbad, the actor, he came out with these baggy pants and he developed them with me. He came in and he said, I want to make these pants and I don't know how to go about it. So I, we sat together and over the course of a period of time, I helped him to work out the pattern and how to manufacture it in a quick manner to where he could profit. And he launched his pants line. And uh, I also launched the trampolines that you have in your backyard, the ones that are in your house, the little trampolines. When they first came out, this was a couple guys, and I sold them some Janome sewing machines under the new home lab label, label <laughs> and helped them to stitch that so that they would not tear because they were having them rip. People would jump and then they would just tear. So worked with them to develop that, and they ended up... Uh, buying a bunch more Janome or new home sewing machines at the time, and then ultimately went into industrial machines after that. I also taught Maureen McCormick, and I taught uh, Clint Walker. I have to do that. He's really tall. He was taller than me sitting, and my mom was like, oh, I can't help him. You have to help him, Claire. She had a crush on him, so it's so cute. And, and, the, and the list goes on and on from there. So my expertise is, is, is wide and a lot of different types of sewing. I also made an outfit for Stevie Nicks. She wore it on stage with leather and lace and rhinestones. The year rhinestones came out on a, on a string. And I still have a, another skirt. It's rotted from all the years of, that it's been. It's been so long. So I also worked on the Star Trek set. It was a mini set for the camera to be above, and it was this teeny weeny little set. So I helped sew all the little furniture and stuff for that shot that they have where the camera shows the entire set. It was actually only this tiny little recreation of the set. So a little bit of my history started out in Los Angeles in Woodland Hills, California. A American Sewing Center was the name of the store. If any of my old students are watching, I love you all so much. Sorry I left California. I moved to Arizona. I did so when my children were young and now they're adults and much taller than I am. So I hope that you will join the Creative Feed Extensive and so we can get to know each other better and so that you can benefit from all of my years of teaching and developing not only products but also processes so that you can fulfill all your sewing dreams and manufacture if you want. Start your own little company. There's no limit to what you can do with a sewing machine. It is huge. It's one of the largest industries in the world. Do not confuse this with some small thing. People try to say that sewing is a dying art. It has never ever even came close to that. It has always been one of the largest industries in the world. You cannot walk through your life without being touched by something sewn every day. Try to imagine a day without being touched by something sewn. I don't think you can do it. 
I helped a lot of people in my career, and it's uh, it's been very fulfilling. I love you guys so much, and I say that genuinely. I really do mean it. So, I feel like all I'm doing is talking now. The the Eversun machine. Oh, you got the Eversun machine. Did you buy it from me? Or, I can't remember. We do have the Eversun machine on creativefeet.com. Yes, our feet fit on all machines. All you need is a zigzag stitch to be able to attach them. And even just about all machines that sew a straight stitch, you can attach our feet, but you're limited to what you can do with them because your sewing machine is limited, not because our feet are. And we guarantee them for life. So even if you decide to do some crazy thing with them and uh, I've seen some crazy things done with my feet, we'll give you a new foot and that's how our warranty is so don't be afraid to be brave and try something even if it seems crazy there's uh, nobody crazier than me when it comes to making sewing machines do things that they necessarily weren't designed to do i'm a firm believer in pushing the envelope and trying things outside the box and i'm here to help you if you want access to me, join my school and all you do is click on, actually I have a, inside the extensive I have a link to click to me, but I think I'm always showing in the school and you'll see a little circle with my face and you just click on it and there's a thing that says say hello and that is how you reach out to me privately. Should you want to work out payments and you want to stay in the school, you can also ask me inside of the school. And anytime you communicate with me, that is stored forever inside of your profile. So if I answered a question and you forgot the answer, you can go back in and scroll up and find where I answered you. It's a great, great little prof little platform. I hope that you're all enjoying my school. It is my gift to you. And Thank you for the VIPs that are supporting the school and for all of you who are about to join the Creative Feed Extensive Master Course. I believe in you. I know that you can be a master of your sewing machine as well. I sure hope that you'll join me for this ride, for this next part of my career and my life. Uh, you've been with me all these years and uh, I'm so grateful to you and love you and I will see you next Thursday or in the school in between. If you've yet to subscribe to my YouTube channel, I sure hope you'll do so today. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button and I will see you in the school. Love you. Bye.